Welcome back, Canaanites, for the first cannon fodder in quite a while. The last few, while definitely nice, haven't really had anything I was really eager to talk about. But that changed this week when we got a small look at the upcoming Anvil's Legacy update. Why, you ask? Well, let's take a look. Well, actually, before diving in, I want to apologize for the lack of content this past week. As some of you may know, my copy of Halo Ground Command came in, and I wanted to do an unboxing video. Like with Fleet Battles, such an unboxing would also include the assembled sets. And therein lies the reason for my inactivity. These figures have been taking a really long time to assemble. It's not that they're complicated or anything, but they're pewter figures rather than plastic or resin, meaning I usually have to hold figures in place for a good amount of time before I can move on to another one. But rest assured, I'll have the final video assembled very soon. And speaking of unboxings, I have also confirmed my Halo Legendary crate will arrive before I leave for PAX Prime, so there's another unboxing video to look forward to. Anyway, with that all out of the way, let's actually dive in. As I noted earlier, this week gives us a preview of the upcoming Anvil's Legacy update, and we start with a look at the new maps. First is the new Arena map, a Water Temple-style reimagining of Halo 4's Haven, now known as Mercy. The architects of this haven wrought miracles of stone and metal to house Vesper Bells, hushed scriptoriums, and ocular pools. The healing waters spun in its heartspring are boom beyond measure, enriched with new topic compounds and microscopic sprites that cool Tempestus souls and mend even the most grievous wounds. Sealed away by the prophets for two millennia, the temple halls once again ring with the songs of victory, while Kaidans clad in traditional finery drink herb-based droughts and consult the record archives before planning their next campaign, as they did in the days long before the Covenant. So, nothing major to discuss there, but I love the lore behind this map. It gives a very Jedi Temple sort of vibe to it, at least to me, especially with the mention of these archives. And in fact, in last week's update, we got a very interesting piece of concept art showing a number of Sunghili likely Kaidans in traditional garb gathering in the temple in what was likely a pre-covenant time, but perhaps even now in the post-covenant. I absolutely love it. I also love how we now have three maps, all named after High Prophets. Next up is the Warzone Assault variant for Attack on Sanctum, Temple. Sunghili Kaidans and Arbiters once made pilgrimages to this temple to sit in meditation and reflect on duty and the momentous actions they were about to undertake. But that was when the temple was whole, a living tabernacle dedicated to the spirits of war and hearthfire. Now it is a silent mausoleum, abandoned during the Sunghili service to the San Shayum. Warriors have returned to the temple, but only echoes of wisdom are to be found here now. Again, the description really gives me this kind of Jedi temple feel. Meditation, reflection, and whatnot. Overall, I'm loving these new maps. I loved the ancient Sunghili vibe from the campaign, and I'm glad to see it making its way into the multiplayer. After that, though, we take a look at some new weapons coming with the update, starting with one that has me particularly excited, the Hunter Assault Cannons. If you've watched my playthrough of the Halo CE mod SPV3, or played it yourself, you'll know why this has me excited. And before any rumors spread, according to one of SPV3's devs, 343 apparently tried to make this a thing in Halo 4, so we technically can't credit the idea to SPV3 much as I'd love to. Anyway, the update features two variants of the Assault Cannon, the first of which is called Berserker's Claw. This first one uses the more classic Charged Shot and can track aerial targets. The second is Wicked Grasp, which burst fires tracking plasma shots, like we see the Hunters do in the campaign and in Warzone. A part of the description for this one really caught my attention. The let Golo that remain in this stolen limb retain a vestige of their once expansive composite mind. Nothing to really discuss, just sounds cool as hell. And closing out this episode, we have two pistol variants, which I'm honestly glad to see more of. First up is the Gunfighter Magnum, a lightweight competition pistol carried by Spartan operators who prefer a no-frills backup firearm. This quick-draw Magnum fast reloads magazines and features iron sights only, no SmartLink scope. That'll certainly be interesting to try out. The last weapon is one many ODST fans have been very excited about, myself included, the Tactical Magnum. A whisper quiet tactical pistol loaded with armor piercing rounds, tailored for Spartan force reconnaissance missions. This is a match grade magnum with an integral baffle free suppressor and 2x full visor smart link. So, yeah, it's basically the Spartan version of the M6C SOCOM from Halo 3 ODST. But also of interest was the mention of the full visor smart link, which would seem to give a canon differentiation between the classic Halo Zoom still featured on some Halo 5 weapons and the general Smartling Zoom featured on almost every other. It's a small detail, but one I certainly appreciate. 
Well, that's it for today. It was fun to get back into a cannon fodder article, but I need to get back to ground command. Before we go, though, next weekend I'll be at PAX in Seattle, so don't expect much in the way of content. I'm going to try and get something scheduled to release over the weekend, but we'll see what happens. If any of you out there are also attending PAX, though, maybe we'll be lucky enough to run into one another. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.